Fox 45 News is following the latest executive vacancy in City Hall. Shante Jackson, the director of the mayor's office of neighborhood safety and engagement, is resigning. And the news comes just one day after Jackson faced questions from city council members during a public safety hearing. The story developing very quickly today. Fox 45 News got word Jackson is leaving just before 1130 this morning. At that time, we reached out to the mayor's office for confirmation. We were told the office would not comment on personnel matters. Three hours later, though, at around 2.30, the mayor put out a lengthy statement confirming Jackson's last day will be June 30th. Some say that indicates the resignation could have come as a surprise. Jackson herself then tweeting she was not asked or told to resign. Fox 45 Chef Abel will join us with a live look at what this means for cornerstone of the mayor's crime fighting plan coming up. Our team coverage begins with McKenzie. McKenzie finna get a Pulitzer on this shit when it all comes crashing down. <laughs> We've tried to get Shantae She's Jackson been a bulldog. to an interview with us for all two years without success. All in our effort for more transparency and accountability within the mayor's office. Director Shantae Jackson, a woman in the spotlight as we investigate yeah, she the agency and gun violence up. prevention programs trying to untangle the layers of concern. Safe Street, central to the question surrounding transparency and accountability for the millions of dollars given to the program. With a checkered pass, the location scattered around the city. In April of last year, an internal review of Monzi and Safe Streets confirming previous reporting and analysis from Fox 45 News. The data is inconclusive surrounding the effectiveness of the Safe Streets locations. Last fall, Mayor Bennett Scott announcing a major shift in management for the program. The change coming after a year of questions from Fox 45 News about the program's effectiveness. Does that signal that the previous CBOs that were operating these locations were mismanaging the locations? No, it's about evolving. We've struggled to get information about how this program is run, the training, the staff. Will this change bring more transparency to this for the public? We're very transparent about the program. But that has not been reality. Fox 45 News threatening to sue the city of Baltimore to get leaders to hand over the contracts with the nonprofits running each Safe Streets location. They're coming for our Safe Streets, yo. Look at this shit. Like, look what it takes. Think about it. If this was a glider city, you would just go down there and say, um, can I see the the books or can I see the, the contract that the city has with this nonprofit? And someone would be like, okay, one second. They would go in the back and they would bring it out for you. They had you sign something. And then they would say, they would give send you a copy. Everything that needed to be redacted would be redacted. And they would give you the fucking thing. Look what this lady has to do to get to the bottom of this shit. This this program is getting gazillions of dollars from just Baltimore City. At all the locations, trying to get a better idea of how they do their work. Few people were found and even fewer details provided. Jackson refusing to provide Safe Streets workers for an actual interview or showing Fox 45 News the inner workings of the interrupters' responsibilities. Former Mayor Sheila Dixon launching Safe Streets during her administration, now reacting to Jackson's departure. I feel that... Refusing to reveal their top secret strategy for stopping Sun Teens from murking each other. Where nobody has to come into the office, they all work from home. Yeah, this, this is... This is this woman, I think she ended up in jail. Her, she was one of the three straight black female mayors that ended up their term in prison or in jail. Streets during her administration now reacting to Jackson's departure. I feel that I don't know if she necessarily had the best expertise and background um, to really handle that um, agency mm -hmm. um it's a big agency. yeah it is a big agency and unfortunately you know i don't know what has happened at city hall you know with the um, change of leadership but um whatever decisions are going to be made in the future um with that agency because it's important it's part of the you know crime fighting effort um that the mayor can identify and find the right person before being tapped as Monzi's director, Jackson was the acting leader of the Baltimore Community Mediation Center in 2019. That's the nonprofit running the Woodbourne McCabe Safe Streets location at the time. The same spot where these court records from a murder case show an employee describing how she was taught to clock in on her phone 
without ever having to go into work and outlining how Safe Streets workers would not hold meetings at their location, rather meet at places like McDonald's and Applebee's. Jackson exiting... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no way. Word. And millions of dollars. I mean, the city is paying these people millions of dollars a year. Uh, Midlife Reset said, I live in an all-glider town in rural Oklahoma and have not been to my house in eight months and nothing has been disturbed. Yeah, gliders ain't gonna fuck with your shit, man. Patient, rather meet at places like McDonald's and Applebee's. Jackson exiting City Hall leaves... Unless it's meth or drugs involved where they gonna steal your copper and shit. But some people don't have to be on drugs. They could be perfectly fucking sober and they gonna fuck with your shit. Here's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement without a leader at a critical time for Baltimore as the summer and crime concerns are starting to heat up. According to city records, Jackson got a promotion in November of last year, bringing her total annual salary to more than $223,000. This whore is making $223,000. Fucking and sickening. You, and you can't ask her for it. it Every question you ask her, she doesn't know the answer to. You got to go find it out on your own. It's just like the fucking DA down in fucking St. Louis. You call the DA's office and nobody ever fucking answers the phone. You can call fucking 20 times a day for fucking a month and nobody ever answers the phone. <laughs> this shit is... Yo, we, we turn places into Haiti quick. It's still unclear who the mayor will name as Jackson's replacement. In Baltimore, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News. Jackson has faced several questions about her involvement with a Monzi employee who was arrested and charged with vehicular manslaughter. Fox 45 News found an email she sent to senior staffers and community-based organizations about the employee, Gardnell Carter, saying, quote, following the support and assistance of Mayor Scott and Monzi, Carter will be released. Jackson eventually told Fox 45 News she meant emotional support. Carter is no longer working with Monzi. He pled guilty to the charges yesterday. Then there's questions about Jackson's ex-boyfriend who runs the nonprofit Project Numa. That group got a federal grant through Monzi. Fox 45 News interviewed internal communication. So it just, it just fucking giving money to all your friends and cronies and shit. Like, it's just fucking... Uh, among Monzi staffers, including Jackson, praising employees for completing the grant application process. The mayor's office says Jackson later refused or recused herself from that grant process. Well, Fox 45 News has tried to question Jackson on those issues a number of times, and we've also requested a one-on-one -on -one interview. She has refused to sit down with us and many times walks away from our questions. We're not talking about cherry picking numbers. Let's make sure we don't report that, okay? Okay. Director Jackson, can I ask you a couple of questions? <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. She's getting, first of all, she's making $223,000 a year. Her program is getting a gazillion dollars. I don't have a year. to show you no data. <sighs> Fuck it. God, I hate these sisters, man. <laughs> Shit is crazy, man. All I gotta say is we're doing our job. Like, no, you're not. The murder yeah, rate's rising every year and shit. You had to put a gun in their face to get an answer from them. It's sad yeah. to say. Are you going to the next event? Yes. Okay. Okay, Director Jackson, can you explain a little bit more about okay. Roca? When can we learn more about Safe Streets? City State's Attorney Ivan Bates commented on Jackson's departure. He said in part he commends Executive Director Jackson for the groundwork she laid for the group violence reduction strategy work, the progress she made in the historically volatile Western District, and the expansion of the strategy into new sectors of our city. Well, Monzi isn't just in charge of safe streets. The department oversees several of the mayor's key public safety efforts, including domestic violence and sexual assault response, safety policy research, and the city's group violence reduction strategy plans. GVRS has come under scrutiny. Some see Jackson's leaving as just another problem for an already troubled program. Fox 45's Jeff Abel joins us live with what this means for the city's crime fight. Jeff? 
Well, you know, city leaders had credited the strategy for making widespread progress, but just how much progress is in dispute tonight? And so is the fate of the strategy. In the city's western district, about two more number one men that have been shot. Violence has hardly taken a break. Nothing in this city is being attacked. It's falling apart. This district is where. <laughs> yo, yo, I believe that guy, man. I believe this guy, man, more than I believe the politicians, man. Facts. Has hardly taken a break. Nothing in this city is being attacked. It's falling apart. This district is where the city's group violence reduction strategy was first launched, a strategy which offers help to those identified as being the most vulnerable toward committing crime. Whatever it is. That help to those who have been identified as being the most vulnerable to commit crimes. Not to be victims. They're giving help to the people who they've identified as the one, the kids that are going to commit the crimes. So the little fucking thug that's been caught with a gun at 15, the little thug who's been caught like with a, a carjacking somebody at 14, the fucking guy who shot up somebody, da 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 Those kids are getting free stuff. And that's this lady's program. And she can't answer a fucking question you ask. A strategy which offers help to those identified as being the most vulnerable toward committing crime. Whatever it is that you need, we're going to provide. Two years ago, Monzi director shot. Whatever it is you need. He's talking to the fucking thugs in the community. She's talking to the thugs. This is, ass not the shit. this is not, you know, if they, if they know exactly who it is, they should be all be locked up by now. Facts. No, whatever you need, look at her message to them. Being the most vulnerable toward committing crime. Whatever it is that you need, we're going to provide. Two years ago, Monzi director Shante Jackson met with Baltimore residents to explain the program's purpose. The city had attempted to launch the program twice before, but failed both times. We did try to do this twice before under two different mayors. Mm -hmm. The first reason what why particular group is uh, most vulnerable to commit crimes, Zach? Any particular group that's more vulnerable than other groups to all to American, doing crimes? All American groups commit crime equally. In right. Baltimore so City. this is a program for everybody. Yeah, right? for everybody. In Baltimore City, <laughs> you're, you're just as likely to get carjacked by an East Asian as you are <laughs> by a fucking son, man. It's just as likely. The adequate political will. DPP wasn't appropriately staffed. Just months after the program launched in the Western District, city leaders touted progress. We are talking about a significant step in the right direction of seeing violence be reduced. They're not cherry picking numbers that we are actually making a significant impact. But you are. That's how you determine that there's a significant progress because some fucking number dropped by 5%. seemed skeptical. Jackson stayed firm. This is an academically proven strategy but a year and a half later the homicide statistics tell a different story so far this year 14 people have lost their lives here making the western district the second deadliest district in the city she came up with a lot of catchy phrases but she was not able to show any successes or any benchmarks to <laughs> damn <laughs> he can't fucking run. eric the red here God, oh deadliest district in the city she came up with a lot of catchy phrases but she was not able to show any successes or any benchmarks to go along with those That's, somebody just said something poignant you can't hide the murder rate well here's the thing though you might be able to hide the murder rate in some like some situations but the thing here you can't hide the murder rate these bodies drop in the middle of the street <laughs> When son kill you, he kill you in the street. You die in the fucking street. That body is laying under a street. The street is blocked off. Everybody's got to make detours. Ambulance are rushing. These are 95% of these murders are like fucking ambulances and cops screaming down the street to the scene. 
fucking everybody outside screaming, women wailing, fucking goddamn police tape coordinating all whole fucking major intersections. You can't hide that shit. Maybe you can hide it if somebody like got killed. Like, well, I mean, interestingly, <laughs> you know, it seems to work out for a lot of them. Huh? I mean, it's like broad, you know, bold faced. Mm-hmm. Like, not even any attempt to evade detection, <laughs> except for, like, yeah. going to mom's house. Well, the murderer can get away, but the body can't be hid. You can't fudge that number, because that body is going to be counted. But the murderer, yeah, the murderer can get off scot-free, but damn, you can't even... The way black people murder is so bold and so brazen. Those catchy phrases. Community activist Kenji Scott has long questioned the progress of the city's strategy. Now, as Jackson prepares to leave, there are questions whether a part of her strategy will be leaving too. Now that the tip of the spear is broken, you have to wonder whether the overall program is in doubt. Now that she's gone, now maybe we can get somebody in there and do something significant. Well, last year, some city council members questioned why the results of the program were not coming fast enough. We're live tonight. Jeff Abel, Fox 45 News. Mostly because it's run by sisters. The latest resignation to hit the mayor's leadership team, meaning agencies responsible for almost $1.3 billion in taxpayer funds. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Jesus Christ. What type of money these sisters are getting, man? Thank you. This is the latest resignation to hit the mayor's leadership team, meaning agencies responsible for almost $1.3 billion in taxpayer funds are without permanent leadership. Recently, the mayor's chief of staff and director of communications abruptly resigned. The communications director... Y'all the most expensive import- imports <laughs> ever, man. It's We're worse, still like- paying dividends on that shit. Wow. I mean, well, look at how much money they're dumping into Albany. So, yeah, it makes sense for a capital. You know what I'm saying? Like, Albany's a money pit. So, Baltimore's got to be like a fucking abyss, a money abyss. <laughs> Shit. The director was appointed just this past February. The director of the city's troubled Department of Public Works is also resigning. Jason Mitchell will be leaving next month. And the city is also without a fire chief. Chief Niles Ford stepped down late last year after a scathing report about failures inside the department. Well, on Fox 40- so oh, everybody- Baltimore seems like it's being run well. <laughs> Everybody's failing at their job. It, it, that's the one thing that unifies them. They're all failing. Wow. My God down late last year after a scathing report about failures inside the department. Well, on Fox 45 News at 5, we spoke with political analyst John Deedy, who says this could indicate a problem within the Scott administration. A lot of people... You, come you think? Through. They're all on their way to be mayor somewhere else, huh? <laughs> Gone recently from the mayor's staff, etc. And, you know, you're facing a re-election situation. You need to have people feel that there's good people aboard because I always have a theory when people leave. When someone leaves the first time that they're gone out of, let's say, chief of staff, people say it's generally that person's fault who left. The second time, it's kind of like maybe each person's fault individually. By the time you're on the, your third person in the same job title, it's not the person who just left. It's the person who made the hire. Well, we want you to join the conversation. Do you have confidence in the Scott administration to run the city of Baltimore? 96% of voters say no. Yeah. <laughs> Your man get handled roughly. <laughs> man, on, on that note, man, I'm out of here, man. Peace out, man. Peace. Hey, Pro Black, stick around for